Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to make various parts of the cat squish, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. Please go to the link in the description above or below the video, depending on where you're watching, to get that link. You will need the written pattern to follow along with this entire amigurumi pattern. To make this amigurumi, we'll need a USL 8mm crochet hook, approximately 235 yards of Bernat blanket. Here you can see I used mostly the white color, but I did also use a couple of browns, a light brown and a dark brown to add the spots. Of course, you can use whichever colors you like to make your cat squish look like your favorite feline friend. You'll also need about two yards of black worsted weight yarn for those facial details, a microbead pillow ball or fiber fill to fill it up. I use a 10 inch ball for this guy. You can see just how big he is. We also used two safety eyes, 24 millimeters, and a safety nose, which is 15 millimeters. Again, the specific details you can change to make your squish your own. You'll also want to have stitch markers and scissors, tapestry needle, your usual crochet supplies. And for this project, if you are using the safety nose, it's a good idea to have a little bit of white felt to help with the backing. And I'll show you how that works as we go. Like most amigurumi, the cat squish is made in several parts. And like the other squishes, it starts with a top-down body. We have a spiral in the middle and we work out from there, very simply with half double crochet stitches. Then for this one, we have a belly worked separately. You can see right there if you look closely is the seam. And on that belly, we have four cute little feet. I chose to make one of them white and then the other three in the darker brown to match the look of this cat. But again, this is a great opportunity for you to customize for your cat. I also added simple little stitches here to represent the toe beans. In addition to the body and feet, of course, we have the ears. Again, I went with colors to match the spots, but you can go with whatever look you like. And finally, we have a cute little tail back here. I kept mine relatively short, but there's plenty of yarn left over if you start with a fresh skein of the white to make this as long as you'd like, or again, whatever color it is you are using right there. Finally, there's those safety eyes and nose, and we use just that little bit of black yarn to add those details for the face. You can embroider all these details on if you prefer, especially if you're giving this to a child under the age of three. And of course, while you can't see it in the finished stuffy, we've got lots of stuffing in here. I use that 10 inch micro bead pillow ball to make my guy nice and big and firm here, but you can use fiber fill if you prefer or stuff it with whatever you like. Let's go ahead and start looking closer at the stitches for our cat squish. I mentioned that I used two colors of brown for my cat squish, and I pulled both of these from one skein of Bernat Blanket Ogo. This is the same weight and size as regular Bernat Blanket, so you can mix and match to your heart's content. Obviously, if you have leftover balls of yarn from full skeins, you can use those as well. For this project, I just used, you can see here, a little over half maybe of that dark brown and a little less than half of the light brown. But again, you can pull from whatever colors you have in your stash. Now, this pattern starts with the white color called whipped cream. So I've put a little bit of paper here behind it to make it a little bit easier to see for this section. Here we have the spiral that starts out at the top of the cat squish. And I do have a separate tutorial for working on this spiral. But in this pattern, I wanted to take a moment, show round four here, which is where we start introducing those spots of color because this is worked a little bit differently. So you'll notice here, I have my stitch marker always in the first stitch of my round. This is super important whenever you're working in a spiral. This is the type of stitch marker that I prefer to use. It opens like a safety pin, and this is the kind I recommend because we're going to be moving this quite a bit. You're gonna basically move it up to the first stitch of every round as you go. So when you're ready to begin round four, you'll want to get your next color ready to go, whatever that color may be if you're following the same spots pattern. If you wanna go with a solid color, just skip the color changes altogether and follow the stitch counts instead without the color changes. So let's get our hook back here on our loop and begin round four together. Round four begins with two half double crochets in the next stitch, followed by a half double crochet in the next two stitches. That's the repeat we do six times before we change colors. So let's go ahead and do that together. We're going to go right into that first stitch for our first half double crochet of round four. And since it's the first one, we want to be absolutely sure 
to move that stitch marker on up. It's just far too easy to lose track of where you're at in a spiral if you don't use the stitch marker. So we put a second half double crochet in there, and then we half double crochet in the next two stitches. So there's one in that stitch and one in the next stitch. That's our first repeat, so we need to do that series of four stitches five more times. Two half double crochets in the next stitch, one, two, and then half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. That's two repeats. So I'm gonna keep doing that repeat until I've done it six times. Alrighty, so that should be six repeats, but we can check by going back and counting the number of increases here. There's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And our last repeat, of course, is two half double crochets, followed by half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. Now we switch to color B, which means we actually need to pull back a little bit on this last stitch we made with our first color. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that stitch right back on out. Now I'm going to begin it again. I'm going to yarn over and go into that stitch and pull up my loop. But rather than yarning over and pulling through to finish our half double crochet, this is where I'm going to go ahead and drop our color A and pick up color B. So you get that all untangled here, pull up a little bit of yardage. And then we simply drape color B, whatever color you're using, over the end of the hook and pull that color right on through. Now what we're going to do is we're going to continue on making several stitches with color B. But as we do that, we want to make sure to crochet over color A, which is our first color right here. We want that to be right there when we finish working color B so we can pick it up and crochet with it again without having to break it and rejoin it at the end of this color change. So to do that, we look at our instructions and with B, we crochet two half double crochets in the next stitch, followed by a half double crochet in the next two stitches twice. So same repeat, just a different color, and this time we do it twice. So we're going to yarn over and go into the next stitch. And when we do that, I'm gonna come back here and make sure that that white strand or color A is also over my hook so that it gets trapped inside the stitch. And while I do believe in weaving in the as ends and not just crocheting over them, I'm going to go ahead and crochet over this end, at least for this stitch, just to lock it down a little bit more. So we'll go ahead and finish that first half double crochet. And let's do a second one. And then we have to double crochet in each of the next two stitches. So this time I'm going to go ahead and let that end fall. I can weave this one in when I am weaving in all the rest of my ends. But again, I wanna make sure that that white strand stays on top of my hook so that I crochet over it with each stitch. And I kind of use these fingers in the back of my project to feel and make sure that I'm holding that strand there in each of those stitches as I go. You can see it's right there. I'm just using my fingers to kind of hold it at the top as I go. It's still behind our work. It's not right on top of those stitches. It's a little bit behind, but it locks it in right where we need it. So we've done our first repeat, two half double crochets, half double crochet in the next two stitches, and we do that again. Two half double crochets, one, two, got that other strand right there, followed by two more, one and two. Now I know though, if I look at my pattern, this stitch, this second half double crochet all on its own here, this one is going to be the last one I make in color B. So I'm not gonna finish this one either. I'm gonna stop before that last yarn over and pull through. And now I'm going to drop color B. And because I've been crocheting over it, color A has traveled with us. And now it's ready for me to pick it right back up, yarn over and finish my stitch with color A. Now I can go ahead and finish the rest of my round with color A. We simply two half double crochets in the next stitch, half double crochet in the next two stitches twice. So there's the first two half double crochets and then half double crochet in the next two stitches. Now you'll notice I'm not talking about carrying that color B with me and I'm not. Again, I can work a couple stitches over this to sort of lock this end down if I want to, but I'm not going to carry it all the way around because I would be carrying it such a long distance that it would take more yarn than cutting it and weaving in those ends. For me, that's kind of where I help use that, kind of make that judgment. So instead, I'm going to go ahead 
and cut color B. I still want to leave a good four to six inches or so so I can weave in that end at the end, but for now I just let that hang out there and finish round four with our first color here. So for our last repeat, we just have that same repeat again here, two half double crochets in the next stitch, followed by half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. And you can see that brings us right up to our marked stitch there, which means we know we've made all the right stitches, we haven't missed our counts or anything, and we've begun the spot at the top of our cat. So as we continue following the instructions all the way around, it's going to be just an expansion of those repeats for a while as we get bigger and bigger, and then eventually we'll work even, and then eventually start decreasing just a little bit. But when we add those other colors, we're going to go ahead and break the other color and make sure to always crochet over that color A when we're making the body. It can be a little different when we're making the belly simply because again, we're choosing which color to break based on what's going to save us the most yarn, and leave us with the fewest ends to weave in. But this is how I make the color change for this one. So as you come back around for round five, oops, get the hook out of there. As we come back around for round five, eventually we're gonna pick up color B a little bit before we did this time, but it's the same thing. We just bring it in with the new strand, make sure to crochet over color A until we get to the other side and pick it back up and then we can cut color B. So you will have a lot of color B ends on the inside. So you can choose to weave those in a little bit, tie them off once you get them together. It's going to be the inside of our amigurumi. So we don't have to worry about making our ends perfectly neat, but do try to weave in the color ends in that same color section. And then you can go ahead and leave those tails hanging out on the inside a little bit to make sure that they don't come out on the outside of your stuffed animal when it's all done. So after you make the body for your cat squish, the next thing we make on our instructions is the tail. To make the tail, I like to start with color C, the darker brown, but again, you can use whichever colors for the tail you like. To begin round one, we make a magic circle. So I go over my finger twice towards me, insert my hook under both of those loops, pull the back loop forward a little bit, yarn over and pull through. I do have a separate tutorial on how to make the magic circle if you need it. After that, I chain one, and work six single crochets into the ring. So when we work into the ring, we want to make sure to go under that loop and under that tail end right there, trapping both of those in each of these stitches, just like we were trapping color A before. In this case, because it's a magic ring, when we pull on that tail, it will help it all cinch up, but we have to trap it in each one of those stitches so that it can gather it up. So there's two, three, four, five, and six. There we go. Now, I am going to go ahead and cinch up that center. It can take a little bit of tugging. There we go. I like to sign of, kind of secure it with my other fingers here. And when it's pulled nice and tight, then we want to make sure to go back and add a stitch marker to that first stitch, because again, we're going to be working in a spiral and it just makes it a whole lot easier if we have that first stitch marked. We'll pull that back down onto the hook there. And now for round two, we simply work a single crochet in each stitch around, finishing our last stitch with color A. So that would be bringing back in our white, or again, whatever color you'd like to do. So we're not increasing here. This is how we make that long, narrow tail. So we're going to go right into that first stitch and make a single crochet and then we need to pull that stitch marker on up to our new first stitch here. And then we can continue on around with a single crochet in each one of those stitches. Now this is going to pull it, it will want to pull it this way, but you're gonna keep pushing it this way. We wanna stay working on the outside of the tail. So there's two, and it's gonna feel a little crazy because you're used to expanding in a circle and we're getting really narrow here. There's three, Four, you can really see that cupping, cupping happening here. Five, and that's good, we want that cupping. It's what's going to give us that good start to our tail here. And six, so I'm not going to finish that one because I know I'm going to change to color A or again, whatever color you wanna use, but now is a great time. If you wanna go ahead and weave in that end back and forth in a couple different directions to really lock it in, and then I would not trim that off. I would just go ahead and leave that on the inside of your tail. But we're just going to push that so that now it's right side out and we're working on the right side 
of our tail here. There we go. So now we can go ahead and pull up our first color or whatever color we want the rest of our tail to be. I like to always pull up a little bit of yardage here so that I can control that tension with my hands rather than letting the yarn ball do it on the table here. I'll pull in the purple here so it's a little easier to see again with the white. So to finish that last stitch of round two, I'm going to yarn over with our new color, in this case, color A, and just finish that stitch right there. So that is what the tail should look like after round two. Now at this point, we're done with our first color, so we can go ahead and trim that off. Again, we'll want to make sure to weave that end in, but we can crochet over it for a little bit as well. Rounds three through six of the tail are simply single crochet in each stitch around. So I'm going to go right into that first marked stitch. You can see that stitch marker right there. And this time I'm definitely going to crochet over both of those tails just to help lock those down. And this is our new first single crochet of the round. So again, we want to make sure to move our stitch marker up. We're going to keep going in the whites. Right now it's easy to see, but the subsequent rounds it won't be. So there's one, and then two. I'll go ahead and crochet over these, probably this whole round, just to really help lock those in. Three, four, and five, and six. There we go. We're going into that last brown one, so we know we're in the right spot there. There we go. And this is where we would pause and weave in those ends. For the sake of time today, because I've already finished my cat switch, I'm going to go ahead and just stuff those onto the inside of our tail here. There we go. And then we just keep on going. We've finished round three, so we've got four, five, and six to go. Just single crocheting in each stitch around. Just make sure, especially now that we're all in one color, Keep moving that stitch marker on up to the first stitch of each round. Now you can see I've worked the tail through round six. We've got the first two rounds of brown and three, four, five, and six there in the white. This is the ball that I had left over after making the cat squish. So you can see there's plenty more yarn if you wish to make an even longer tail and add more rounds evenly like this. However, I then added three more rounds where I added just a little bit of a bend in the tail to give it a little bit more interest. So rounds seven through nine are all the same here, and they start by loosely slip stitching in the next two stitches. This shorter stitch will give us that little bit of a bend in our tail. But because we're going to be working back into those slip stitches, that's why it's so important to do them loosely. Normally, we might make our slip stitches really tight and then getting the hook back in there is just no fun. So to loosely slip stitch, what we want to do is go ahead and go into that first stitch there and yarn over and pull up our loop. And before we pull it through the active loop, we're going to give our yarn over a little bit of a wiggle on our hook. Just let it settle in there, make sure it's pulled up nice and high before we go ahead and pull that loop on through our active loop. This will make sure that this slip stitch is loose enough for us to get back into with our hook. Now it was the first stitch of the round, so we're still going to put our stitch marker in there. There we go. And then we want to loosely slip stitch in the next stitch as well. So we go right in there and same thing. We want to just give that a little light tug, make sure that loop is nice and high before we pull it on through our active loop. Then we just single crochet in the next four stitches. So there's one, two, three, and four, which brings us right back to our marked stitch. Pull up a little bit more yarn here from my skein. There we go. And then we just do all that twice more. So we go right into that first stitch. You can see because I did it so loosely, my hook goes right on in there. We wanna do the same thing. Pull up our loop, give it a little tug before we pull it on through. Make sure too, after you make that stitch that you don't pull back on the working yarn because that can really tighten up the stitch as well. We still wanna move that stitch marker right on up. There we are. Loosely slip stitch in the next stitch. Same thing. And then single crochet in the next four. One, two, 
three, and four. Now for round nine, it's not as important that you loosely slip stitch because we're not going back into those stitches again. So you can take your time and do it loosely again, or you can just go ahead and make regular slip stitches. We just slip stitch in those first two. We still wanna mark it so we know where to stop in case we get distracted. There we go, so there's one and two. And again, we don't have to make sure that those are loose. We're done working into them now. And there's our single crochets then. There's two and three and four. And with that, we're ready to break our yarn. Again, if you wanted to make a different shape tail, add more rows, more length, add a couple more bends to it with some other cleverly placed slip stitches, you absolutely can do that. However, what we want to do before we finish up on our tail completely is make sure that we're leaving a nice long tail for sewing. Now, we're only going to be sewing around this opening of the tail here, so it doesn't have to be a super long tail. You know, 12 inches or 18 inches will probably be more than enough. So after we cut our yarn to finish it up and get it ready to add to our body, we're going to go ahead and just pull up on that end, and then we need to get our tapestry needle. We'll want to make sure to have a large tapestry needle since we're using a bulky yarn, or rather super bulky. So we're going to go ahead and put the end of our yarn right on our needle, and then we want to do a seamless join right to that first slip stitch. Now we can go ahead and take our stitch marker out for the tail, we're done with it for now, but we're just going to insert our needle into that first stitch there, right under those top two loops as if it was a hook, and then pull down and do a nice seamless join. This is just going to create a really nice smooth edge along the end of our tail here. So when we sew it onto the body, we can just whip stitch through each of these stitches and those body stitches and attach it in whichever direction you like. Next, we make the ears and of course we'll need two, unless that's the way you need to customize your cat. I used B and C, but you can use whichever colors you like. To make the ears, we start with a magic circle. Again, over my first finger towards me twice. We get on in there, get our magic ring started. There we go. Pull through, and then we begin round one with a chain one and a single crochet into the ring, followed by five half double crochets. Very similar to how we start the body, but with fewer stitches because we want to get that ear shape, not that big open wide body shape. So there's two, three, four, and five. I wanna make sure that I go into that ring and capture that tail in each of these stitches. So let's see, we should have a total of six stitches made. I want to make sure to put my stitch marker in that first one. There we go. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we've got the right number of stitches. So we want to go ahead and tighten up that magic circle again, right there in the center. If you ever get one of these that just doesn't wanna tighten up, you're afraid the yarn's gonna break, maybe something went wrong. You can always just go back with that tail and your tapestry needle and on the wrong side, really cinch it up using your stitches as well. We've got this one all tightened up. So now we're ready to reinsert our hook here and continue on with round two of our ears. To make round two, again, we're working in a spiral, so we're not joining or anything. We're gonna start with a half double crochet right in that very first stitch. So we'll move that stitch marker right up there. And then we continue with two half double crochets in the next stitch. So there was one, and we sometimes have to really look at these stitches because we're, again, we're not working in a big flat circle, so you need to make sure you come over to the next stitch and work two half double crochets in there. So there's one and two. This will want to cup on you again. And I, we also, again, wanna make sure we're working on the wrong side. If it cups up like this while you're crocheting, it doesn't hurt anything at all. We just wanna make sure to flip it right side out before we attach it to our cat. So we do that repeat a couple more times here. Half double crochet in the next stitch. Two half double crochets in the stitch after that. One and two. And then we do that once more for our little ear here. One half double crochet in the next stitch. 
and two half double crochets in the last stitch. There's one and two. You can see we've come right back to that stitch marker. So again, you can take a moment to straighten that out. This is also a great opportunity, again, to go ahead and weave in that very first end. Don't have to trim off the end after that. You can just stuff it right up into your ear. There we go. Then we're ready for round three of our ear. For round three, we work two half double crochets in the first stitch. So after we make our first one, I want to go ahead and move that stitch marker on up again. Put that right up there in that first stitch. There's one. And then we need a second half double crochet in that same stitch. And then we half double crochet in the next two stitches. One and two. Two half double crochets in the next stitch. One and two. Then half double crochet in the next two stitches. One in that one and one in the second one. Get a little bit more yarn off my ball here. There we go. This one really loves to roll around. We've got one more repeat to go here. Two half double crochets in the next stitch. One and two. And half double crochet in each of the last two stitches. There we go. So you can see how working our increases a little differently than when we make a flat circle is starting to give us this really great sort of cone shape for our ear. In round four, we're going to start with a half double crochet in the first stitch. Again, we want to move that first stitch marker right on up. There we go. And then two half double crochets in the next stitch. One and two. And then half double crochet in the next two stitches. So this is kind of an odd repeat because our repeat begins and ends with half double crochets worked by themselves. So that means our repeat is half double crochet in the next stitch, two half double crochets in the stitch after that, then half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. So that means we start again from the beginning, half double crochet in the next stitch, two half double crochets in the stitch after that, one, two, then half double crochet in the next two stitches, one in that stitch and one in the second stitch. Then do that repeat again, half double crochet in the next stitch, two half double crochets in the stitch after that, one and two. There we go. And we finish that up with a half double crochet in each of the last two stitches. One and one. There we go. So at the end of round four, you should have 15 stitches. And this is about what your cat ear should look like. We only have two rounds left to make our ear. So for round five, we start with a half double crochet in the first four stitches. So we go right into that first one. There we are. Move our stitch marker on up again. So now we've got our first stitch marked. We want to half double crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, and three. So we've begun our repeat with half double crochet in the first four stitches. Then we finish our repeat with two half double crochets in the stitch after that. One and two. Then we do that again. Half double crochet in the next four. One, two, three, and four. And then two half double crochets in the stitch after that. One and two. And then finally, we need to do that one more time. Half double crochet in each of the next four stitches. Two, three, and four. And half double crochet in each of the, or excuse me, two half double crochets in the very last stitch. There we go. So that was our repeat for round five. We've got just one more to go to make round six. 
But round six isn't even a full round. It's just a little bit to finish off our ear. So really, it's single crochet in that first stitch, which you can go ahead and mark if you'd like. But you don't have to. And then we are going to slip stitch in the next stitch. And then finally, we break our yarn, leaving a long tail for sewing again. For this one, we're going to want to go all the way around that ear, so we wanna make sure to leave it a little bit longer, maybe about two feet or so. I always like to have a little bit extra. I think it's better than having too little. We want to do the same thing we did with the tail though. Go ahead and pull up on that end. And then we can use our tapestry needle to seamless join to that next stitch. And then when we go to add our ears to our cat, we simply fold them flat like this and sew them with a little bit of curve right to the top of the body. Next, we need to make four feet. Again, you can use whichever colors you'd like. I made three in the dark brown and one in the white. Then I used the light brown to add the toe beans. But this would be a great opportunity to pull in a little bit of leftover pink yarn if you have it as well. So we're going to start round one with a magic circle again. And then like the other pieces or most of the pieces in this pattern, we're working in a spiral here. So we start with a chain one and then single crochet into that ring, followed by six half double crochets. There we go. So there's that single crochet and one, two, three, four, five, and six half double crochets for a total of seven stitches. Again, I want to make sure that I grab a stitch marker and put it in the top of that first stitch. And then I can use my tail end here to pull the magic circle closed. I'll just give that a nice firm tug there for our foot. There we go. And again, we can weave in that end, but just leave the excess to stuff the inside of your foot. So we'll get our loop back on our hook here. There we go. And there is round one for the foot. Round two is pretty simple. It's two half double crochets in each stitch around. So just be sure to move up your stitch marker again to that first stitch of the round, but put two half double crochets in each stitch of round one. You can see here after round two of the foot that it's cupping up again. And once again, we can just push that right this way, weave in that end, tuck that end in, and we're right back on the correct side for our foot. Round three, we're going to start adding a little bit of shaping. So we start with a half double crochet in that first stitch. Oops, there we go. Pull that on through and get that stitch marker moved right on up here. There we go. And then we want to single crochet in the next five stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. Then we half double crochet in the next two stitches. One, two, single crochet in the next five stitches. One, two, I'll just keep pushing that tail out of the way there. Three, four, and five. And then we finish up with a half double crochet in that very last stitch. And we've come back to the stitch marker so we know we're in the right place. Now in the instructions, we're to pull up and secure this active loop with another stitch marker. We wanna make sure we don't lose any of our stitches here because this is where we can take the opportunity to add those toe beans. To make the toe beans, I cut a 12 to 18 inch length of color B. Again, you can use whichever color you'd like to use. Then I come back here to the little foot that's in progress. You can see here, here's my final stitch and I'm kind of going to just look at it from this angle. What I want to do is use this yarn to simply sew three or however many you'd like to make little dashes on one side of the foot. So what I'm going to do is just kind of look at it and determine where I think I'd like those toe beans to be. Right around row two seems like a good spot. So I'm just going to insert my yarn here, my yarn needle from the inside of the foot, 
and pull through, but I'm going to make sure to leave a few inches here at the end. Again, we've got to weave in our yarn or tie it off somehow. Then I'm simply going to come back here to the outside and look and see, okay, this is where it comes out. Where do I want my little toe beans to be? And kind of come up here and see if that looks good. That one looks pretty good. Add another one over here, kind of the same, about a stitch or two apart, try and make them kind of the same side or size rather. I did find sometimes they just disappeared like this and I needed to pick my stitch back out and redo it and put it in a slightly different spot or if it just disappeared altogether, come back and try and get it more on the surface of the stitches. That happens sometimes with big fuzzy yarn like this. You need to kind of find a spot where that little stitch is actually going to show. So it can take a little bit of experimentation. There's one that wants to show up nice and proud. Then we can come over here, find another spot for our next toe bean and just play around with these until you get the look you like. Like so. Once you've got all the toe beans you want, you can weave in those ends and then we're ready to go back to row four of our foot. And now we're ready for row four. Previously we were working in rounds, but now we're going to work a row that's going to close up the end of our foot. So we wanna make sure that any ends that are left are stuffed really right in there towards the end of our foot. What we're going to do now is we're going to fold this piece flat like this and single crochet through both of these layers to close it up and give us a nice flat edge to secure our foot to our belly for our cat. So what we want to do is go through this first stitch and the stitch we just made like this. So they're sandwiched together. So what I like to do in cases like this is actually grab a second stitch marker. And I'm not going to close it, but I'm just going to put it right through that last stitch that I made as well. This is going to make it a little bit easier for this very first single crochet. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna go ahead and go into that first stitch just like I don't normally would, but then I can kind of hold my yarn here out of the way a little bit and try my best to get through that stitch that's marked with the other stitch marker. We wanna do this from the inside of the foot to the outside. Just this first one is kind of tricky. There we go. I've gotten through that stitch, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that stitch marker right on out of the way, as well as our first one. Then I can simply yarn over, pull that loop through both of those stitches. There we go. And finish my first single crochet. Then we're going to do that in pairs all the way across. We go to the next stitch on this side and make sure to send it through the next stitch from the other side. Yarn over, pull through both layers and finish a single crochet. Once it's all lined up, you can see it's so much easier to continue this right on across. Now we should have a series of seven stitches here. So we've got one, two, three, four. We should have three more to pair up. There's five and six. And this last one, there we go. This last one can be a little tricky because they're right next to each other too. It can feel a little odd, but you just go right on through there and trust, trust your hook nose to go under those top two loops there. There we go. So that is round four. At the end of row four, we can go ahead and cut our yarn and finish off and weave in our final end here. We don't need to leave a long tail to sew these to our cat. The belly of our cat squish is worked much like the top portion, but with far fewer rows. We just have to close up the bottom of the body. So here on the instructions, you can see the belly ready for the feet to be attached. You use stitch markers on the specific stitches outlined in the written pattern to attach those feet. Here we've got our sample of our top, but you can see, we want to make sure that when we attach our feet to those stitch markers, it's like this, so that the belly that faces out and the toe beans face down. So we can attach those with stitch markers. Then as we continue working our belly, whenever we get to those feet in round six, we'll crochet through both of those layers, the foot layer and the belly layer. That attaches them, and then the feet will be all attached to the belly when you're ready to sew it onto the body. After you've made all the pieces of your cat squish, then it's time for the assembly. I like to start by adding the safety eyes. I add them around rounds 13 and 14. And I actually ended the body here in the front. So the single crochet that finishes up the body would be down here. And I helped use that to line those up as well. But of course, if your cat has different features, different spots in different places, you can definitely adjust to make this fit your cat. So we add the safety eyes. And then after that, 
I added the safety nose. Again, you could embroider any of these features if you prefer. But the safety nose, I have a special tip for because it is a little bit of a smaller safety piece and this is a really big chunky yarn. So I was at risk of having this nose pull through the stitches. So I have a little tip to help with that. So here I have a small safety nose. This one happens to be pink. Again, you can use whatever color you'd like. If you haven't used safety eyes or noses before, they're basically um, a large, sort of like a button with a shaft here, and they, they have these specialized backings. You have to put the backing on this way, and the width of the backing help holds it in the fabric. But with our great big stitches, this one was a little bit small. So I grabbed a little bit of felt. You can use whatever kind of felt you like. I like to make sure that it matches with my yarn color as much as possible. And then I simply cut a small square, about an inch and a half or so. Don't have to measure it out, just eyeball it. And then I like this felt because it actually, this one is from Anchor, it's stitchable felt, which is really cool. But I like this one because it's got these pre-cut little holes in the center and I can just use those to get my knife in, or my knife, my scissors in there rather, and cut just a little hole. We just want this hole to be big enough for the shaft of our safety eye or nose to go through like that. Then when it's time to attach it to our project, we can find the spot where we want to put our safety nose or safety eyes if you want to make these those extra secure as well. And we put the safety nose or eye right through the fabric. And then on the back or inside of the fabric, we can go ahead and add that felt. There we go. Then we can add that backing. And you want to make sure to push that down nice and hard until it pops a couple times. You might not be able to uh, hear it, but you'll definitely be able to feel it then you know that safety eye is secure on there. And having this wider backing really just creates a big wide backing with the felt so that it can't pull on through, through your crochet stitches and it's nice and secure. After you've added the eyes and nose, that's when it's time to add the whiskers and mouth. I used Bernat Maker Home Deck which is a smooth black yarn here, or it comes in several colors, but I used black, but it's really nice and smooth and it really kind of stands out from the Bernat blanket. Of course, you can use whichever worsted or even probably a light bulky weight yarn that you'd like to add those details. You can see I just sewed them on right here, much like I did with those toe beans. After the face is finished, then it's time to add the ears. And this is a little bit easier with the eyes and the nose on there. You can kind of use those to follow your line up and center your ears as best you can based on that. For the ears, I used those long tails to sew to opposite sides of the head around rounds five through eight. So we can kind of count out here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So those were the rows that I sewed my ear to. And just like I showed you with the ear that we made together, we just fold it flat and give it a little bit of curve and then use that long tail to whip stitch it right to the body. Remember, at this point, you will have not have stuffed your squish, so you'll have full access to the inside to do your sewing and weave in all of those ends. The final piece to sew on before our final bit of assembly is the tail. And again, we just wanna to go to the back. We can kind of use our ears to line it up, center that, and you can put that curve facing whichever direction you'd like it to go. Once the tail is sewn on, I like to sew it on around round 17, then it's time for the final assembly. You will have sewn on all of your pieces, woven in or secured all of your ends. And finally, we put the pillow ball or stuffing on the inside of the body and then use the long tails of the belly to sew it onto the body. When we make our belly, we're going to leave two long tails, one in the brown and one in the white. The instru written instructions really spell out how to do that. And then you can use the brown tail to sew the brown side and the white tail to sew the white side. So you get just a really clean seam right there. You can see it's just a row past where we added the feet. And then weave in those final ends and you'll have finished your own cat squish. And that's how to crochet the cat squish. Once again, this is a free pattern you'll find on mooglyblog.com. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.